Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Off-road review of this 2022 Silverado 1500 ZR2. And we're about maxed out on articulation. Don't count this one because it's really not under that much pressure, but on the rear, that's as far as that'll travel. And it's a decent amount, but it's not as much as some of the other off-roaders. This thing pretty darn capable, decent tow rig, good on the highway. Hurts a little bit in the fuel mileage range, but still better than a TRX and about on par with a Raptor, maybe not quite as efficient but really close standard 33 inch tires on it it does pretty much everything fairly well it's a jack of all trades a master of none but still better than a master of one it's a great all-rounder for those who are going to be towing towing toys or whatever getting out into the back country need something you can drive down dirt roads a little bit quicker with and not have to worry about smashing a front bumper getting it ripped off real easy this thing's all metal everywhere so of course red tail hooks so you know it's an off-roader but really quite a capable vehicle high speed off-road here we go driving this thing in it was already dirty so i was going pretty fast but it's uh I mean, it's bouncing with wheels off the ground through that right there. So there's not a ton of wheel travel in this thing. And I think that's what the biggest detriment or issue or biggest thing holding it back is the wheel travel. So the shocks are excellent. There's no hard topping out, bottoming out, any of that. Shocks do great, but it just, doesn't have a ton of wheel travel so I'm I'm above the 20 mile an hour for off-roaders for the most part there's a few bumps that line up perfectly like right here where oh that one actually wasn't too bad going the other way that one um, I think I bottomed out the suspension but like I said the shocks on this thing do such a good job of damping when you're at the limits at the topping out and bottoming out it's hard to know for sure and it, the truck does great drives great it's definitely not the fastest it's not as fast as the Colorado ZR2 through that stuff but on the flip side of that it's also a little bit smoother it feels like to me so it having the long wheelbase and wider stance seems like it makes for a much more stable ride but it's just not able to go through that quite as fast as the much lighter Colorado ZR2. Here in two-wheel drive, you can see the wheel spins a little bit before the traction system kicks in, brake lock differential or pinion control, as Chevy calls it, and transfers power to the other side, able to make that climb pretty easily. One excellent feature with the Silverado ZR2 and the Colorado ZR2 is that you can lock the rear diff in two-wheel drive. This is something you cannot do in some other competitors like the Nissan Titan Pro 4X and the Toyota Tundra here in the Silverado ZR2 though you can lock it in two-wheel drive and as you see it's very easy to make that climb. Here in four-wheel drive auto, you can see a bit of wheel slip, but again, Chevy's pinion control transfers power where it needs to be. Also, pay attention to the throttle on this. It's hard for me to keep it under control, and as we saw with just the rear diff lock on, I spun the wheels a couple times trying to just ease into it. When we switch here to the terrain mode, things change entirely. So you can see the brake lights are on. In terrain mode, it's one-footed driving and much, much more controllable. It's really easy to ease into the throttle, nice and smooth and slow. And you can see as I climb the hill here, it does exactly that. 
Like, I'm able to go much slower in this mode than I was able to in the normal mode. Alright, four-wheel drive high, normal mode. We do have the off-road pages up on the main screen. And let's throw the cameras up. One thing it needs, a camera button. It's not on the main screen. There should be a physical button for a camera. And maybe there is, and I just am not finding it right now. Anyway. It did have the hill start assist or whatever where it holds the brake for you until you start rolling forward. Most vehicles would spin right there, even in like four high or whatever. There we go, getting a little bit. The extra length on this thing because it's so big compared to most of the midsize smaller trucks that I take. Oh, they're really bouncing here. Okay, don't like that. I'm gonna hit terrain mode. Right there, terrain, now it says terrain there. This should enable one foot driving and I think, yep, more aggressive on the braking. Setting the wheel spin to get more power down. I'm full throttle right now. Oh, it's, it's trying to figure it out. Oh, I guess we're just going for it. Don't scrape. Good deal, no scraping. Okay, well, terrain mode, that's kind of interesting. We're gonna stick in four high if we can and use downhill assist here. Let's see if I can get a better angle on this. Okay. There we are. Okay, downhill assist. Says train mode not available. So this is in four high with the downhill assist. Uh, the camera's clear enough, I can see that rock on the forerunner. It's a little bit tight. So this is all the computer doing it. And in four high. We're one mile an hour. I mean, doing a really great job. Excellent job, Chevy, GM, whoever did this. Good job on the downhill assist. This is a pretty rough hill. And the system, I mean, there's a little bit of sliding and stuff as the wheels switch which two have traction, which two don't. But overall, a really good system. That's in four high. Yeah, I'm just gonna hit the gas pedal because we're going so slow. Oh, it's set to four miles an hour? You just set it with by pushing on the gas, weird. So when I pushed on the gas, now I'm pushing on the brake. It automatically, so that's how it sets it. So it's set down to one because I held the brake. And then if I push on the gas, set to two. Push a little more, three, four, five, but back down to four, set up to five. That's cool. So you just set the hill descent control by using the gas and the brake.
All right, next up, um, we'll just do normal mode with the rear locker. So we're four high. I'm gonna get on the hill before I turn that locker on and I did not make that turn. Oh, get rid of that hill descent control. Jeez, the throttle on this thing, it's like no throttle, no throttle, no throttle. Everything it has. Uh, I almost ran into my trailer backing up to it, going up the curb because it was, you had to get a lot of throttle and then it took off. All right, hit the rear locker. Oh, reduce speed. I'm going too fast for it to lock in. It, It's in, it's locked. It doesn't seem to have a problem engaging as soon as I get below like three miles an hour, but it does want you to be just barely moving to engage it. So just four high, normal mode, rear locker. Easy enough. So, I mean, the rear end slid a little bit there. Now, we're going to go to four-wheel drive low. It's automatically gonna disable stability control and traction control. And we're gonna leave the rear locker on for this. Okay, so we are in L1, so it'll stay in first gear, and I'm scraping the sidestep, that scared me. Um, I'm still on the brakes, so I'm gonna be on the brakes until we get past this, the biggest ruts here. off the brake and four miles an hour we'll hit the steepest spot right here crawl ratio is 40.8 to one and five miles an hour not terrible in four low Okay, we're going back to four high. One more thing I want to test. There we go. And in four high, we are now going to disable traction control and stability control and see what it does in four high. Okay. Hold it down, traction <clears throat> is disabled, and stability control is disabled. Okay, let's see. What we wanna see here is tons of wheel spin with no braking or minimal braking on the spinning wheels. Let's 
and has enough articulation. What in the world? Well, apparently four high, if you turn off traction and stability control, it does. I have the rear locked. No wonder why it did so good. Okay, we'll go back down. Um, I have the rear diff unlocked now, so it's open. Okay, try that again. We're just in normal mode, but we have traction and stability control off. I can hear the brakes running just a bit, even with traction and stability off. Yep, it's still definitely using the brake system, but it's doing better, so. There we go. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the best uh, idea is there, because it still is applying the brakes, but it's not cutting throttle by turning off traction and stability control. So it, you do get the benefit there, but you're not totally completely free rein. And that might actually be the best solution. I'm not 100% sure if I like that more or less. Now we're going to hit four low again, four low, slashing, Let's see if I can get it to engage, there we go, and we're going to hit the downhill assist again. So downhill assist, four wheel drive low, Let's see if we don't. Do that. There we go. Okay. And I'm off the brakes entirely. <clears throat> and it's the same speed as the four high, it looks like. So yeah, I would pretty much just consider this the same as the four high. This is so slow. Okay, we know it works. Downhill assists, four wheel drive low, and no problems, of course. On the head up display, I wish you could see what I can see on the head up display, <clears throat> but I can't hold the camera in front of my face and it's not super clear every time. But anyway, the, the off road pages, he was saying low traction and showing all four wheels with low traction. Normally it only shows one, two, sometimes three wheels. I don't know that I've ever seen it show four wheels with low traction.
direction. All right, final test here. Not even really a test or a challenge for this thing, but we don't have any lockers on. If I hit the button for the front and rear, it will, I felt that one lock in. It says reduce speed. There you go. So now front and rear are locked. What did that just say? I brought up something and then went away. ABS is off, of course, because there's no difference in wheel speed between the wheels, so I can't be sure on how to use the ABS. I mean, I don't know what to do. This just gonna crawl up this. Not gonna be any problems at all. Yep, there we go. No wheel slippage whatsoever. Underneath, we have a metal bumper that leads into a metal bash plate and that leads into a metal skid plate over the front diff. And then everything is kind of tucked up nicely. The exhaust hangs down just a hair. Another skid plate over the transfer case. Again, the exhaust hanging down and no skid plate on the gas tank. It is elevated up in between the frame initially, but as you get back towards the rear axle, it's down a little bit lower. And then here on the back, your lowest point is actually the spare tire. And overall, very well done. Could maybe use some extra protection over the fuel tank. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures off-road review of this 2022 Silverado 1500 ZR2. Glacier blue metallic, beautiful paint color. Multimatic DSSV shocks, quite capable, excellent shocks. This thing, front and rear lockers. It's got the terrain mode for one-footed driving. It's got plenty of features, bumper cutouts, and I don't know, two inch lift, all sorts of stuff on this to help it off-road like a champ. And you can see pretty good wheel articulation, decent amount of stuff there, decent amount of droop on the other side. Not as good as some of the other desert runners, but really quite a capable vehicle. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications, and give me a thumbs up and comment down below. Be sure to check out the other videos on this truck and other vehicles you're interested in as I take as many vehicles through this off-road course as I can. And then this one I also did a towing video with, so be sure to check that out. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.
Thank you for watching Engine Adventures off-road review of this 2022 Silverado 1500 ZR2. Glacier blue metallic, beautiful paint color. Multimatic DSSV shocks, quite capable, excellent shocks. This thing, front and rear lockers. It's got the terrain mode for one-footed driving. It's got plenty of features, bumper cutouts and I don't know, two inch lift, all sorts of stuff on this to help it off-road like a champ. And you can see pretty good wheel articulation, decent amount of stuff there, decent amount of droop on the other side. Not as good as some of the other desert runners, but really quite a capable vehicle. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications and give me a thumbs up and comment down below. Be sure to check out the other videos on this truck and other vehicles you're interested in as I take as many vehicles through this off-road course as I can. And then this one I also did a towing video with, so be sure to check that out. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.